just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones. You think about Halloween would be start without a few tricks or treats? Ha! No chance. This year as a swan song for me old GTA 1060, I reviewed behavior entertainment's refreshing new take in the survival horror genre. Can this game escape the haunted mansion? Or will this game succumb to the fear? Well, without further ado, let's scare ourselves senseless and let's find out. Before we start this review, a big shout out to my friend in the Twitch community, Twitch community Lord Lugan, for suggesting Dead by Daylight as a Halloween special. So feel free to check him out. Links in the description and the written version. Right, so the majority of survival horror games, for example Resident Evil and Silent Hill, are mainly single player experiences as the player gets immersed in an interactive horror movie. As the player progresses through the story filled with various jump scares and overpowered enemies that could kill you quite quickly. This title, however, goes against that stereotype. The game revolves around a dark and twisted ancient being known as the Entity. This being was travelling around the cosmos, consuming worlds as he went. You play the part of either one of a team of four survivors or one killer who is alive with the Entity. It is up to you to repair five generators, open the door and escape the map. Or hunt down all four survivors, putting them on hooks and eventually killing them one by one. The accessibility scores are as follows. To give the ball rolling visibility a give it 10. There are numerous colorblind modes that can be changed on the fly to view the game's options menu. This allows a visually impaired player with, to play this game with very minimal issues. On top of that, there are fun customization options again in the options menu. With this feature, you can control the size of the text which is displayed from both the menus and subtitles. This is an epic win for a visually impaired player as the menus and subtitles can be read without putting him or her at risk of getting any ice cream. Next up on the plan, audibility gave it 7. There are in-game subtitle support which can be enabled and disabled via the options menu. However, when you are playing as a survivor, you are reliant on your sense of hearing to detect where the killer is. When the killer comes close to you, a heartbeat will sound. The faster the heartbeat, the closer he or she is to you. As you can probably tell, this puts a player with a hearing impairment at a marked disadvantage, as he or she does not know whether or not the killer is close to you, and if so, how close he or she is. On the other hand, the spine chill perk somewhat alleviates this disadvantage. If the survivor has this perk enabled and then to his or her loadout, the perk cycle located at the bottom left of the screen starts to fill, as does the icon continues to fill as the killer draws closer. However, the perk itself has to be locked and upgraded through grinding. A suggested fix would to use the controller's vibrate feature to inform the player that the killer is close to you. The closer the killer is to you, the more intense the vibration. This feature is pre present in Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning. Why not this game? This game is somewhat playable for a hearing impairment. However, a little tweaking would make this game more accessible. To fill the next generator, mobility gave it 7.5. Right, so let's get the negative set the way. The console version is going to be too difficult for a mobility impaired player to play. There are no customized op customization options in terms of analog sticks. For mobility impaired players, multiple stick layouts, more specifically a legacy stick layout, which allows the player to move forward and back and turn left and right with a single stick. It's a deal breaker for more players with mobility impairment. The PC version, on the other hand, is like an night and day. The keyboard and mouse controls can be completely customized. Of both versions, there are toggle controls that would make this game fair for a player with mobility impairments. For example, you can set your action, action button to toggle, 
which allows you to manipulate the camera, allowing you to keep watch for the killer. On top of that, the keyboard and mouse and controller inputs can work in a co-pilot fashion. For example, you could use your trusted controller to initiate generator repairs and complete skill checks while using the right analog stick to manipulate the camera to watch out for the killer at exactly the same time. So the PC version is easily playable with a player with a mobility impairment. However, work needs to be done to add alternate stick layer options for the console version and on top of that, players who play on PC with a controller. Last but certainly not least, gameplay gives a 9.5. This is one of the very rare cases that a stereotype has been taken by a developer, putting that stereotype in a paper shredder and shown the world the otherwise. An example of this would be Halo Wars, showing the world that RTS on console is a thing. The multiplayer slash teamwork element make this game truly unique. As I stated earlier, there are four survivors and only one killer. However, the killer is extremely overpowered and can easily outpace you. Most importantly, I can take you down with a few hits. Also, the survivors can't fight back against the killer, so survivors will have to be more reliant on stealth tactics. For example, hiding in a locker or a dark corner, waiting for the killer to pass by and then evading him or her. On top of that, a fellow survivor can heal you, take you off a hook, and make a generator repair much quicker. Loadout management is also extremely important when playing this game. Survivors and killers have access to four perk slots. These perks include the spine shell perk that I previously mentioned and the pre-fight shell perk, exclusive to the survivor Dwight Fairfield. By the way guys, more on that in a minute. Which increases heal and generator repair speeds. If they were to ever to take place from the survivor's immediate radius, they can also take one piece of equipment with them. These include medkits allowing the survivor to heal him or herself, flashlights which can contemporarily blind the killer should, they, should it be flushed around their faces, and toolboxes which can sabotage hooks, rendering them when them useless for a minute, and enhancing generator repairs. Finally, players can invoke single-use offerings. These can be used to force a certain map, thickening the darkness, making you harder to spot for the killer, and these equipment can be enhanced using add-ons. These can be earned through, through the grinding of the game. Finally, your choice of killer and survivor completely challenges the playstyle of the game. For example, Leon Kennedy can throw a flashbang to temp temporarily blind the killer, and Dwight Fairfield's unique perks focuses on granting teammates around him temporary bonuses. The same goes for killers. Nemesis can use his tentacle to infect survivors with the T-Virus. The artist can, can use throwing knives to knock down any survivor from range. However, four hits would be required, and if the artist runs out of knives, he has to go to a nearest locker to restock on knives. So in summary, Dead by Daylight is a completely unique take on the survival horror genre. It is addictive, grind based gameplay keeps you playing hour for hour for hours and hours on end. However, the game does get repetitive after an extended gameplay section. So if you're looking for a spooky game to play over the Halloween period and are too tired of generic single player based survival horror games, this game is an excellent choice and I would thoroughly recommend it. And the overall score is a fairly respectable 85%. See you guys in the next review, Spartan Command in 1998. I'll see you guys in the first week of November. Mm -hmm.